Hey, 420 MSP, Harry here. We're going into Q2. Uh, all signs are pointing towards better times ahead, but we got something really special in Q3. Right after the start of Q3, Jim, take it. Retail now. What's the story? When, where, who, what, why, how? <laughs> Harry, always great to, to be here with you. Yeah, so uh, the Retail Solution Providers Association is having its annual trade show July 25th through 27th in Nashville at the uh, Gala, Gaylord uh, Opryland. And so I always say, you know, with an asterisk, annual, because 2020, nothing is annual. But all the years before that, uh, it was an <laughs> annual uh, event. And so we uh, usually draw about 2,000 technology solution providers, so uh, VARs, MSPs, software developers, vendors, distributors, no end users. This is all a channel event. And then we get about 160 exhibitors as well. And everything we're hearing right now is a lot of pent up demand because there hasn't been an industry wide event in the retail restaurant or grocery IT channel since like 18 months, if not longer. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I've had this talk with you. I've certainly had it with a lot of people. We are involved in a show um, in, in the retail dispensary space in early November. That show at one point was April, then it was May, then it was June, then it was, I think, September. But, but Jim, we only know what we know at the time. This is before the vaccination started to accelerate, right? And now the vaccinations are ahead of plan. So I actually think in early Q3, you, you are going to have a window of opportunity. I, I wasn't sure about that. <laughs> to be <laughs> honest, but I don't know what your feelings are on that. But, you know, we're, we're ahead of plan. Three million vaccines a day as I'm speaking to you is what I heard last night. Um, we're and, and, and my second shot is this upcoming Friday. So, you know, ready to rock, man. Yeah. Thoughts? I agree. But, and also my second shot is uh, tomorrow as uh, we're recording this. And, you know, the feedback that we've had. So obviously, you know, folks have asked us earlier in the year, even late last year, planning the event, like, is it 100 percent? And I'm like, if you haven't learned anything the past 12 months, like nothing is 100 uh, percent by any means. But we've been doing a survey of uh, our members, again, these VARs, software developers and vendors and asking them, what are your plans? We've asked them essentially yes, no or maybe. Right. And so when we ask the maybe when someone gives that answer, we say, why is it almost every single one of those are based upon if I'm vaccinated, if I'm vaccinated, I'm a definite yes. And so the ratio of yeses and maybes to the no's is running like nine to one. 10 to one at this point. And the only people who are the no's are like, well, I work for a giant vendor and they have a travel restriction. So I don't think I'm going to go. We're starting to hear that some of those larger vendors are actually easing up before they said no travel in 2021. But just like you said, the vaccines are the, the vaccines are the gating factor. All the marketing that we can do for every event, you know, it's important to do, but having everybody get a shot in their arm, like there is nothing better uh, than that, quite frankly, making people confident that they can travel, making them confident they can engage with other folks. So I'm with you. I really think Q3 is going to be, I want to say 100% back to normal. And our event is going to look different from past ones to make sure that we play it ultra safe. But I think yeah. we're seeing the confidence level soar. We're seeing people starting to hit the road again. It's certainly planning to do that in Q3. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Uh, so what what are some interesting topics for the, for in particular the 420 MSP audience? So you have a, a track. Maybe you want to speak towards that. Sure, I will say a little bit of history from an RSP standpoint. You know, you didn't talk about cannabis. You didn't talk about marijuana. It was one of those things that maybe somebody whispered about. And I can tell you, we have multiple uh, uh, members in our RSP membership who I didn't know up until last year had been playing in this vertical for years. They just didn't want anybody to know. But now we're realizing the opportunity that's presenting itself with all the, uh, you know, recreational and medical uh, legalization just keeps moving and moving. We're actually having a separate track that's going to have four separate sessions focusing on the Canatech uh, uh, vertical market. This is in our emerging vertical track. And so the way that we're taking it is we want to appeal to the folks who really don't know anything about the cannabis market or just exploring it. But if anybody's been playing in it or has started to go down that path, we're going to make sure we have education for them. So our 100 level course is the cannabis market and Canatech overview. And Harry, we're definitely going to be leaning on you for that in your Canatech ecosystem overview. Our 200 level talks about entering the cannabis vertical, like where should VARs even start? And then we have two 300 level courses. One is the seven elements of a successful 
cannabis VAR, like studying our current members and what make them successful. And the other 300 level course is going to be mistakes cannabis VARs and ISVs can't afford to make because you know very well and our uh, members have taught us there are ways that you can do this wrong. It's not just like jumping into another vertical with your left hand. Uh, you've really got to focus on, on what you're doing. So those are the four uh, breakout sessions we're going to have. Yeah, no, and I, I want to catch that last point. Um, yesterday on LinkedIn is, 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 you know, as I emerge as a principal analyst in Canatech, and thank you for your help, by the way, a lot of people are helping me learn the space, and I'm the first to admit, probably six months away from being taken seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, it, Harry, you know, from a cannabis man point, you're very close to being taken seriously. Maybe other things you and I aren't going to be taken as seriously. With there our we sense go. Of humor. Yeah, well, certainly uh, uh, playing for Gonzaga in the NCAA finals. <laughs> you're a big basketball fan. I'm yes. not going to be taken seriously. Oh, that game, that game hurt. Um, hurt moving hurt on. Hard. Yeah. The, uh, but, but the point is, um, if you're not 100% committed i had a comment on my ecosystem chart up on linkedin nice lady and she was sincere we looked at the space we dabbled in it we're not sure um she's a technology professional and and i replied back on linkedin in her comment and i said you know here, here's what i know i mean i'm a few i'm a few some odd years into this and if you're not a hundred percent door slamming foot stomping serious about the Canatech opportunity let's say let's save us both time right mm -hmm. don't don't do it because the players that are now getting in and the emerging markets we'll talk about that another day the new states um these are smart people jim <laughs> yep. mean, they're yep. they, they're not confused <laughs> And they're passionate. And that's one of, you know, the seven elements of a successful cannabis VAR. One thing that we've learned from our members is you need to have one person dedicated to the cannabis market. Now, does this mean your entire team has to only focus on cannabis? No, but you have the one no. person who's learning all the ins and outs, who's learning the language, who's learning the solutions, who's learning the pain points, who knows the regulations. So when they walk in, they can actually be a trusted advisor to that end user and not be the reverse where they get completely stumped uh, by the cannabis dispensary owner because that will just kick you out right away and you they won't ever answer your calls. It's hard enough to get them on the phone. They won't ever answer your calls if you don't know what you're doing. So yeah, you're 100% right. Okay, and what were those dates again? I'm going to, like Rachel Maddow, take notes off screen. <laughs> what were the dates? Sure. Uh, it's July 25th through 27th, uh, retail now in Nashville at the Gaylord Opera Land. Uh, really looking lo lo forward to it. Lo lovely time of year. I'll be sure to wear my lighter fabric shirts. Let me tell you, brother, I, I've heard they get humidity. <laughs> Our event is always in late July or early August, and we uh, oftentimes have it in... Um, uh, Las Vegas. And I remember the first time I ever went to an event there, I felt like I was sitting in my car in the summer with the heat turned on right into the blasting out. So yeah, you don't want to be outside, but that's a good thing. You get dropped off. At, if you've ever, anybody's ever been to a Gaylord, it's like its own uh, ecosystem. You can live it in is. there for it, months and months. It, and that's what we do. Yeah, it is. It is. And uh, been a while since I've gone to uh, Nashville since a uh, a well-known lady in our space with a sales and marketing kit has her annual convention in Nashville. I wish her the best. Um, all right, Jim, I think we covered off on this topic and uh, next next month we'll, we'll find our footing and talk a little bit about the rapid acceleration of the legalization of states. And you and I will both be vaccinated when we talk next month. So double good hey, news. Hey, there. There we go. I'll sh yeah, show my card. Although I, I, I read from a, what a PII, the privacy, you're, you're actually not supposed to put that card up on Facebook. Do not show your card. <laughs> Do not show your card. Do not give everybody, you, that's like, this is a side note that I've learned from an RSPA conference. Like even having your birthday, it's great to have everybody on Facebook and LinkedIn knowing your birthday, but then that's a personal identifier that you probably don't want to, uh, you, you don't want to have out there. So yeah, that's part of why you shouldn't show that card. So show them your sticker. Don't show them your actual card. All right. Well, hey, make sure you, you you take the following day off after shot number two. I certainly am. I'm 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 playing it straight, my man. Thank you. Thank you, Harry.